been the challenge in that particular area? Yeah, thank you for that question. Uh, it is a major concern to all of us, all the stakeholders in the industry, Nigerians, etc. We have finished a procurement process. You know, everything has to be done with law. There is process, process, process. It is beyond my capacity or the capacity of the agency to wake up and start clearing this rate because you must have necessary approvals, etc. We finished all that in the massa. We've related with the Ministry of uh, Transport that has almost finished. And uh, I think with the reports that I've had so far, the BPP has also uh, given a certificate of no objection to our request in clearing the, the shipwrecks, at least the, 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 the first phase. So I think when the government finally approves... There's such a lengthy process. It's lengthy. If you do anything otherwise, it will see. The EFCC, the ISPC, and the rest of them will come in. That have, you see, that is the, some of the problems we are facing. We don't run the maritime industry as an industry that is occasioned by emergencies that can happen any time, that is bound by time and speed, and so many other things. We treat the maritime industry as if we are in a civil service context. In other parts of the globe, the maritime administrations are on their own. In some parts of the world, they are not subjected to civil service bureaucracies and the rest of them. In Nigeria, very little thing you want to do, you must get necessary approval. I know how government works. The shame, the ladder that it will take. So you feel it's true? Yeah, it is, it is correct because you can't, I can't take a decision to do so many things without getting final approval. And the more persons or institutions or organs of government that are involved, the, the more time that is going to be spent. And a lot of things are happening. A ship could be abandoned. Um, uh, an emergency situation can occur, what will you do? And in an attempt for you to uh, uh, fast track certain things that will even be beneficial to the country, it can be misinterpreted. We will say, yes, you did a good job, but who gave you the mandate to do this? Is it within your purview? Tell us Excellent. more about you know, that ship, because recently we, we know that the president visited Lagos, yes. and he, one of the places he was taken to by the Lagos State Governor was the shoreline. Yes. I mean, a host of people have lost their houses now around that uh, Lekki Equair shoreline because they believe that the ad abandoned ships there you know, is what has caused the erosion of the shoreline. And it seems Nigeria is losing land to the water because of those abandoned ships. Uh, tell us what exactly has been the major challenge in terms of removing those ships and helping to save the, the coastline, as it were. The major challenge is due process. Due process. But I am getting happy that we are almost at the last lap of the award of the contract. It's not something I can just go and remove. It's not because, particularly the first phase of activities in removal of the risk, uh, uh, um, IRX, uh, we don't have the capacity to do it, but it has to be done with the process. Else, tomorrow, sometimes, somewhere, some other way, come after you, that you flattered your process. You, you must also be thinking about your, your peace after government. So, it's something that, but with uh, the BPP that has given no certificate of no objection, I think the, in a matter of weeks or few months, we'll start... Which agency is the BPP? <laughs> Sorry. I'm just a little curious. Bureau of Public Pro uh, Procurement. Procurement. Oh, I it see. also gives you a certificate of no objection, particularly when large sums of money are going to be involved. Okay. Yeah, it has to give you. Those are the processes that I'm talking about. So you can't wake up and just do certain things, even if the, your actions are well intended. Okay. What do you intend to do with the ships when you clear them? Well, they should be recycled. They They'll should be, be recycled. Do you partner with any states or? No, we, the, the, the companies that are uh, shortlisted in removing the wreck should be involved in uh, the recycling uh, processes and monies will come into the coffers of government. If states want to also set up, say, maritime transport, do they have to go through any process like the one you talked about? Maritime transport, if, well, uh, what you are saying is generic. We don't know when the, you, you, you're pinning down money, uh, maritime security, I mean, maritime uh, uh, transport, in terms of what and what you want to do. You want to float a company?
to run to uh, to come with a national career or you want to trade in the coastal region it depends but in terms of regulation we are the regulators nimasa is the regulator that is a nodal uh, uh, point in even uh, in the higher mode that is the international maritime organization so you cannot replicate the functions of nimasa without repealing our laws I got hope here who says uh, NPA statutory duty is to ensure port safety and security. Is it not duplication for NIMASA to take up the role in ISPS code? No. When you go to the act that established the NIMASA, the ISP, eh, enforcement of the ISPS code, code is our cardinal responsibility. What we are to supervise what NPA is doing in the ports. NPA is to ensure that the, the ports are safe. Eh? within the context of the ISPS implementation, then we are to supervise whether MPA is uh, 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 living according to its responsibility with the ISPS code requirements. So it is not duplication. So we are to supervise. It's not as if we, as a regulator, will put uh, the, the ISPS code on behalf of uh, oper terminal operators, port operators, or jetties. But our own job is to ensure that you have done the right thing and that responsibility is given to us from point of law, our act, and from international obligation, that is the IMO. You recently, just because we're already being wound up now, you recently got the support of U.S. Coast Guard. Can you quickly tell us the significance of that? Yes. You know, over 10 years, about 10 years or so, that unique function of ISPS code implementation was taken away from NEMASA. It was taken and given to uh, the PICOMs, that is uh, a, a committee that was set up uh, by the Nigerian government uh, to implement the ISPS code. The, it was a committee, so it got uh, uh, government uh, uh, felt that uh, the proper organization to do this thing is NEMASA. So they reverted back to us and were given that status as a DA, designated authority in implementation of the ISPS code, just May. In 10 years, there was no structures put in place. We just within three months, we were able to put strategic structures right now in the implementation of the ISPS code. The world uh, applauded our, uh, our actions within this short period of time. We are not saying that we have achieved everything that uh, is needed in terms of IMO standard with implementation of ISPS code. But with the, the steps that have just been taken within three months, it shows that if given the opportunity, we are going to get everything implemented within some period in our life. All right, then. Uh, Ziakede Akbo-Blokemi is the Director General of NEMASA, if I got that right. Thank you for coming on this morning. Thank you. We're well, back after this. Please join us.